Civic duty is the film, Peter Krosa is the man, and there he is right there. Nice to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. There you are. Um, could you relate to the guy with the gun about to go into the neighbor's place? Could you relate to that guy? Oh, not really. No. But, uh... But I had to, 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 to make the movie, yep. and uh, it's an interesting film. And for people who haven't seen it yet, but they get a chance to see it, uh, the idea is uh, in this world of fear-mongering on television, and there's this constant scroll on news channels of, this was found, and maybe this, and we don't know who did it. Uh, there's a, I guess a point where the toll will be taken on people, and some people will really get very paranoid, and it will play out. Yeah, when I, when I first read the script, I was struck by the fact that nobody had written a, a, a script up to this point about an American citizen who thinks his Middle Eastern neighbor might be a, a terrorist. And um, when, when living in Los Angeles, the months that followed September 11th, uh, everybody that I knew was glued to the television. I think that at first the media was fairly reflecting the fear that everybody felt. And so the, the film is partially exploring the, the blurry line between uh, justifiable suspicion and fear and racial profiling, mm -hmm. and also the line between fear and, and paranoia, because it was definitely a point at which it felt to me that the media was serving to amplify and magnify uh, the fears of the public rather than um, provide them with uh, honest information about how, how they should view the world they live in. Because people wanted answers. They wanted to know what kind of world am I living in? How many terrorists do we think mm -hmm. you know, are here? And, and so Terry is an extreme example or extreme expression of the thoughts and feelings of many Americans at the time. Did you have to hang around with some um, uh, neighbors who were a little on the edge, as it were, <laughs> to kind of get, a, did you know guys like that? Did you visualize some dude in your uh, complex? Well, there, 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 were, there were some news items. There were some people, you know, of Middle Eastern descent who had been beaten in the, in the States. There were some hate crimes and things like that that had happened. But I did know one person in Los Angeles who actually contacted the FBI because they felt like there was somebody in their neighborhood who, who might be a terrorist. And According to Richard Schiff, when he investigated uh, playing an FBI agent, he found out from the FBI that you know, overnight they were inundated with phone calls from people across the country who start, suddenly were you know, suspecting their neighbors were terrorists. Wow, well, Richard, Richard Schiff, Toby Ziegler um, in the West Wing. Uh, it, you're on six feet under, and... I feel like I should die, by the way, after seeing my life flash. Your life like that? Yeah. Like that. yeah. That was mostly accurate. Dude, I saw Blood Harvest. I saw that movie. You got hit in the face wow. with a baseball bat. I, you know, I wanted to die when that came up <laughs> on the screen. Right there. When, when you see a movie at, and, and you're at the end of the run as opposed to when you're in it making it, do you, do you, are you, I've talked to lots of actors who they come and promote a movie and they hate right. their film. Or they, oh, yeah. yeah, they're like, oh, that, I wouldn't have edited it that way. I don't know why they made those choices. Are you that kind of guy when you... Uh, no, I'm, I'm very proud of, of civic duty. I think that people are ready for it. I don't think they necessarily were a few years ago. You know, we made this about a year and a half ago. And I think that people are ready to take a good hard look at the you know, emotional and psychological fallout of that time. And civic duty is also a, a metaphorical film where characters don't always speak for themselves. They speak for larger bodies of people, whether it's a country or the government. Do you like making a movie again? Do I what? Do you like making a movie again after being on, on, on the TV show for a while? Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot, actually. It's nice because it's, you know, there's beginning, there's middle, and end. It's uh, all of one piece. And as an actor, then, you can, you can manage what you're doing in the beginning of the piece or the middle because you know what end you're working towards. Whereas if you're doing something like Six Feet Under, mm -hmm. it's much like life where you don't really know what's going to happen in a year or two. And, uh, you know, leading one life was enough for me. And so uh, playing <laughs> Nate Fisher got to be uh, a little rough at times those did, last three seasons. Did but, it? Yeah. In what way? How did that manifest itself? I just didn't know what Alan Ball was going to come up with next in terms of uh, Nate Fisher's Job-like life. He just continued to suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer. So, uh, you know. Are you a method actor? Uh, you mean, did I end up suffering in yeah. life? Too? Uh, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing about TV is it's, it's tough to leave it there because you have to return to it. You know, whereas doing a film like Civic Duty, I knew I could let it all go by the end of it. So, You started Civic Duty, how, two months after you ended? I started rewriting with Andrew Joyner, the writer, and the director, Jeff Renfro, who's a, who's a Canadian. And uh, we did that uh, for about two months before we went up to uh, Vancouver and started filming. Did you give yourself enough time after Six Feet Under before you jump right into another project? Mm. No, probably not. After, after this was over, I did, though. I took six months off after I finished this. What did you do? I uh, just stayed at home on the, on the apple farm. Yeah. Hung out. Wa watched your neighbors, profiled them, got all freaked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the guy across the street growing grapes. I was thinking, eh, he might be up to something. Then. <laughs> nice. Um, the, uh, there, there is always, it's a double-edged sword. You want an amazing TV show if you're going to have a TV show. Mm -hmm. You want to have a great career, but then you, you don't want to be that guy. 
like your only mate fit. You don't, you're, right. did you ever worry about being, I mean, Six Feet Under was a huge success, but did you ever worry uh, about maybe I can't do anything? I, I didn't really, I guess, because I'd done a lot of work beforehand and it had been a lot of comedy work. You know, I started out working with Carol Burnett doing sketch comedy. Uh, I don't really include my Blood Harvest film. <laughs> but we do. I mean, apparently do. <laughs> um, and then after that, uh, you know, eventually I did Sports Night. So there's a lot of comedy along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's been interesting to me that the, the bulk of my career still has been spent doing comedy, but now I'm really known for the dramatic do work, like which the is like, I wonder, did, did you, did you, do you miss doing the comedy now? Well, I made Civic Duty. <laughs> so no. It's hysterical. <laughs> it's a big laugh. And then there was that time when that, I did, I did yeah. like the relationship between you and your partner in that film, though, uh, your wife, because of the oh. whole, um, when you referred to the, the neighbor as the Middle Eastern looking guy. Oh, yeah. And she instantly went, the, the what? The what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be politically correct. And then, yeah. of course, he goes far in the politically incorrect way mm -hmm. to show her that, yeah, I think he'd prefer being called the Middle Eastern guy. Right. So you still get a lot but of... That, but that scene yeah. was really about how we talk at home and the privacy of our own home, how we, you know, we don't talk the same way out in public as we do at home. We say things at home we don't out in public. We definitely don't. Uh, you were on that show, Six Feet Under, the people talk about dying a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about how you're going to die? No, have you? 